Let's get salty! Hey everyone, Zeta here again today with a brand new video and it's time to start another new broken series. We did a whole series before taking a look at the most broken a minion in Hearthstone history. We went through every mana cost. Well, we skipped through zero because zero cost minions weren't too good. But we went one through 10, well, one through everything basically, and then came up with a community poll to determine what the most broken minion of all time was. And today we're gonna start the most broken spell series where we're gonna take a look at every spell from zero to whatever cost we can go with. And yes, we will include zero because there are some pretty broken zero cost spells and then yeah i'll give you my top 10 for each one you guys can give your input in the comments below it'll all culminate for a final episode where you guys will vote together and determine what the most broken spell in hearthstone history is and before we get into our top 10 list let's take one moment to hear from today's video sponsor let me introduce you to a game that needs no introduction raid shadow legends one of the greatest mobile rpgs of all time it's free to play and available to play on both mobile and PC. And just check out the links in the description below or the QR code on the screen to hop into the action. And well, orcs normally have a bad reputation in the fantasy genre, but in Raid, they're not all bad. Although they were created by the Dark Lord Sinoth, they do have a legit reason to hate humans. And after a brutal war, they were exiled and are struggling to survive. They've paired up with Queen Eva of the Elves, but who knows if they can actually trust her. Find out everything that turns out or how it all plays out by playing in the campaign mode. I've played my fair share of Raid Shadow Legends over the past year, and my favorite aspect of the game, honestly, is just how much there is to do. Whether it's hopping into PvP arena battles, exploring the amazing story with amazing characters and detailed lore, or just joining into a clan and battling in epic clan bosses, you'll always have something to do when you log into Raid Shadow Legends. And this month alone, there's a bunch of stuff going on with a bunch of new champions introduced which includes a new guardian ring coming soon that gives you a bunch of new ways to use your champions with all these updates there's no better time than to hop into raid shadow legends and not miss out and there's rumblings of a huge update coming in december that you're not gonna want to miss out on so if you want to get an even bigger head start on everything going on all you have to do is hit the link in the description or scan the qr code right over here on the screen and you will get an epic hero Chanaru and available for new players 200,000 silver one XP boost one energy refill and one ancient shard so you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in the game once you're in you can find me by the way under the name Zeddy and maybe hop into my clan joining some epic battles and I'll see you in Raid Shadow Legends. Thank you to Raid for sponsoring this video. Anyways, let's take a look at the top 10 most broken zero mana spells in Hearthstone history. And again, it's we're gonna go with the same guidelines we did with the uh, minions. These are all gonna be like at their best version. So basically pre-nerf, like day one, like most busted style. It's, it's not gonna be the current version, although some of these haven't been nerfed, so it could be the current version. Anyways, starting off at number 10, we're we're going to go with the priest spell circle of healing it's a zero mana spell that would uh basically ref heal every minion by four health all minions by four health and this was incredible with like norshar cleric wild pyromancer basically draw your entire deck you could play with an akanai and play with circle of healing and clear the entire board very versatile card hell you could just play an inner fire priest just to buff up your stuff play divine spear inner fire just a very versatile card and uh, you could play it with Auctioneer in like a, a cycle deck, just draw a bunch, play it with Nizamani, discount cards in your hand for free. Again, zero mana spells can do a lot and Circle of Healing not only could just be good to cycle with said cards, it was just a very powerful card. And yeah, definitely warranted at number 10 on the list. At number nine, we have a card that was nerfed twice, then reverted back to one, but it was originally zero mana and that's Hunter's Mark where you would set a minion's health to one for zero mana, very cheap, efficient removal to say the least. And uh, yeah, it was just too good. It eventually was just determined to be too good for Hunter just to set anything's health to zero. This was just a ridiculous, powerful effect. And they only gave it basically to Hunter because it was like, you know, an aggro class. They're not trying to control the board, but play Hunter's Mark on a top minion when you need to go face can be very effective. You have like Unleash the Hound synergy, Knife Juggler synergy back in the day, very good. But then you got cards that came out later on like Candle Shot, 
where this card just became a little too good and has, even when they reverted it back, they went from two mana, where it was nerfed the second time to two mana. It never went back to zero. And uh, yeah, a pretty busted card, but you can play it for zero currently in Classic. So if you want to relive those days, it's still there, as are some of well, these other cards, and we'll talk about that. At number eight, we have a Druid spell, and that's kind of a theme with some of these. Uh, in Biggin, zero mana, and you give your minions in your deck plus two, plus two, and they cost one mana more, and they can't cost more than ten. And uh, yeah, it's just a really good high roll. You play in Biggin on one, and then play a Pirate in Wild and cheat out a 3-3 three, three patches, or play double in Biggin and get a 5-5 five, five patches. That's very good. Um, yeah, it's just a high roll deck. It's in Biggin was used in also even like some big decks where you play like strength in numbers and then cheat out an even bigger dragon. I remember it was with the untargetable dragons. It was really good. And yeah, I mean, it still sees play in wild today with everything that's going on in Biggin is worth the slot in a lot of those aggro druid lists. And turns out getting Keleseth effectively on turn one for zero mana is pretty good. The mana costs increase your minions definitely can be relevant. It can definitely be a drawback, but a lot of the times your opponent just won't be able to answer that early insane board sweep of stats in a big end was just one of those things that would carry you there at number seven we have a classic card that's still in the game today in standard and that's shadow step zero mana spell that returns a friendly minion to your hand and it costs two less and this is enabled a billion things it's quest rogue leroy jenkins uh we see it these days with like uh octobot and field contact and the groat spell damage synergies we've seen it with alex Straza. it's just an insane card just bouncing lackeys at some point um shadow step is just one of them one of the most efficient useful uh spells in rogue's arsenal it cheats mana effectively it's zero mana gain mana on a friendly minion and uh edwin van cleef would become very big with a lot of shadow step shenanigans and honestly i probably could warrant it being higher on the list there's just a lot of really good zero mana spells that have come out throughout hearthstone's history and one of those at number six is lightning bloom the dual class spell for shaman and druid you gain two mana crystals this turn overload two and this is enabled i don't know how many strategies in standard these days it sees play in wild you know it's just it's mana it's free mana you do overload but you even have cards like overdraft that get rid of the overload in shaman it's it's an upside some of the times we've seen dane pop off and do insane damage combos and yes lightning bloom with like kalthos sunstrider enabled like turn one lethals in wild for a particular point in time a ridiculous card that i'm surprised has st has stayed for over a year since it was introduced in skull Man's academy just an incredible card mana cheats good and again this is just free mana with you know the overload but do you care if you're overloaded if you've just won the game no i don't think so um at number five we have another classic card for warlock Soulfire, zero mana deal four damage discard a card this was a staple in Zulok, it was even used in Handlock for additional reach. You could play it with like an old Malagos if you want for some Malagos OTK shenanigans. But just think about how insane Discard Warlock is in Wild with like free discount or free discards like an upside all the time. Imagine what that would be like with a zero mana Soulfire. Can you imagine? This didn't stave zero mana for very long. It, it got nerfed pretty quickly to one. So you can only imagine the impact this card would have had throughout the history of Hearthstone if it stayed at zero. It's one of those what ifs what if Soulfire never went to one um well it'd just be broken it'd be absolutely insanely busted and for that reason i gotta put it at number five just such a good card zero mana deal four with potential upside with the discarding synergies these days uh pretty insane um at number four we have a card that was nerfed twice and that's first day of school it originally was a zero mana spell that would add two one cost minions to your hand random one cost minions it was nerfed to one mana and then gave three and that now it's at one where it gives two and this was like an auto include in basically every paladin deck because it was it was ridiculous like one drops are really good and you get two of them for one or for zero sorry and you have a guaranteed turn one play we're like with unnerfed hand of a doll at the time libram of wisdom hand buff strategies broomstick strategies just an absurd card and um it was just it was so good that it, it basically elevated a hand buff paladin to be a real deck in the format and wild in conjunction with some other cards but still first day of school 
absolutely ridiculous value. Zero mana, effectively draw two and enable some ridiculous strategies. And uh, again, was nerfed pretty quickly as it was just way too good. And you'll note almost all these cards have been nerfed, almost all of them. And speaking of that, we have preparation, rogue spell, zero mana. Originally, it would discount your spells by three and then it was nerfed to two and it still sees plenty of play at two. But yeah, zero mana, you could play sprint back in the day for four mana and actually sprint was buffed to six and that would be three. But uh, it got nerfed eventually because it was just, it was too good. You, uh, I think the th card that put it over the top was raiding party or with zero mana drop two pirates draw a weapon and kingsbane rogue went crazy and yeah prep with just all the spells and all the insane synergies that rogue has going on uh it definitely was just crazy and the more i play classic like prep fan and knives and all that stuff it's still damn good and uh you can only imagine what would rogue look like today with a zero mana preparation although they barely cost you know, they don't really spend mana on cards these days. Maybe it wouldn't even be relevant. I don't know. But regardless, prep for me has got to be top three. It is just so freaking good. And at number two, we have another dual class spell, Raise Dead. This is a priest and warlock card. Zero mana, deal three damage to yourself and add two minions to your hand that have died this game. So effectively, you get zero mana draw two two minions that you would love to get back on average because your deck is built around it. You have self damaging synergies, particularly in Warlock, which are incredible with cards like Flesh Giant, the Demon Seed, Dark Glare, countless cards. This has just been one of the most obscene, disgustingly good cards that has been auto included in Warlock basically since it's been introduced in basically every deck that can possibly run it uh priest for the most part too getting back even just like uh you know a sethic veil weaver and Nazmani, getting back a zephyrus whatever you want it's just insanely good i can't believe this card has not been nerfed yet it's just it's disgusting it's disgustingly good the synergies are just out of this world for it like if it just said zero mana add two minions to your hand it didn't have the self-damaging thing i'd honestly think it could be argued to be a worse card so like the downside makes it even better ridiculously good card but not quite number one on my list and before we get to number one let's take a look at some honorable mentions and we have uh topsy-turvy silence elemental evocation hot streak forbidden words moonfire and backstab so what is the number one most broken card zero cost spell in hearthstone history in my opinion well we already talked about lightning bloom so we gotta just put Innervate on the list. It's Lightning Bloom without the downside. It has a no overload. This card used to give you two mana crystals. And that was it for zero mana. Busted, turn one Yeti. But the cards that put it over the top were like Vicious Fledgling, Bitter Tide Hydra, and just imagine, <laughs> imagine we have Lightning Bloom and Innervate today. But you just never pay for mana. There, There is some upside to overload, like I mentioned, like with the overdraft synergies in Shaman, but overall, just what were they thinking with Innervate? I it was what it was basically my original most hated card. You guys know I love to hate on cards. And when I started playing Hearthstone, I'm like, what why is Innervate a card? They just it created these unanswerable early states that you just couldn't do anything about. You would just lose. There's nothing you could do because your opponent had Innervate, Innervate something. And what, what how am I gonna answer this like six drop on turn two? I, I just lose the game. It was always a very frustrating ridiculous card and for me it, it's just a, a no-brainer it is the most broken zero cost spell of all time so let me know in the comments below what you think what you think is the most busted zero cost spell of all time i love to hear it and make sure to hit that subscribe button we'll go over the next series which is one mana spells and should we include quests on that that's an interesting question quests are spells and well they might dominate that list anyways we'll see you in that video if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe have a great day and stay salty, my friends. <music>